Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make cafe drinks and cake pops for a stuffed animal. I don't really drink coffee, but I do love seeing all the fall drinks they come out with, so I feel like now is the perfect time to make some cozy drinks for your stuffed animals. Now let's get started! Okay, so I'm a little sick right now, so I'm going to keep this voiceover chill. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the cup for what I'm calling the pumpkin spice latte. But I know with the whipped cream and drizzle on top, it's more like a caramel frappuccino. I'll leave this printable cup pattern in the description box. I'm first just tracing this on normal printer paper and can cut it out. And then I can start bending this into the cup shape and matching up the sides. And once you get it looking the way that you want, you'll want to mark where that end overlaps. Next, I'm going to paint this the color I want the coffee to be, and I was going for a pumpkin spice latte, so I mixed some tan, white, brown, and orange. And I'm not sure if this is the actual color it is, because I've never had a pumpkin spice latte, but I've made some at home. So I just made a color that I thought would look good. And I'm making sure to leave a few millimeters of space at the top, because that'll kind of transition into the whipped cream. And you only have to paint a little bit past that mark you made, since some of the paper is going to be overlapping. After letting this dry, I can form this into the cup shape, so I'm adding some glue to the white space and curving it into the size I want it. I eventually had to make this a little bit narrower, but you'll see later. Next, I'm going to add the whipped cream, which will pretty much give this cup a structure, and to do that, I'm taking three squares of toilet paper and folding them one on top of the other. Then I'm going to fold that square in half so it makes a triangle. Then I'm folding the corners of that triangle into the top so they meet in the middle. Then I'm going to take that bottom point of the square and start twisting this into a whipped cream shape. This might take some practice to get it exactly how you want it, but it's okay to start over. I definitely did after this. And you want to get this to the exact right size to fit in the cup you made. So mine was too small, so I took another piece of toilet paper and folded it in half lengthwise a few times. Then I wrapped that around the base of the whipped cream, so not part of the swirl, so it really just made the sides wider. But mine was still too skinny, so I just decided to take apart the cup and wrap it to the exact size of the whipped cream. So now I can add it to the cup, and hopefully it takes up most of the height of the cup. Next, I'm going to add a little glue in there so it doesn't slide around. And now to add a base to the cup, which is kind of optional, I guess. I'm globbing on a bunch of glue on the inside of the bottom of the cup, and then placing that on a piece of cardboard or cardstock, and then I can let it dry. Once it's fully dry, I can trim off the extra around the bottom of the cup. Now, the next thing I'm going to add to make this look super delicious is a little caramel drizzle on top. And you can paint this on, but I find it's kind of hard to do over the whipped cream. So I'm using this piece of embroidery floss that is the perfect color for caramel. I tried to arrange it the best I could without the glue and then started gluing it in. Now, while that dries, I'm going to make a straw for this. So I'm using some dark green origami paper to, of course, give it a Starbucks look. And I cut out a little rectangle where the width should be the height of the straw you want. So now I'm taking a toothpick and adding glue to the paper and rolling it around the toothpick until the straw looks thick enough. Now I can slide it off the toothpick and add this to my drink. Luckily this fits really easily into the whipped cream and I just poked around to find the best looking spot. After gluing that in, this pumpkin spice latte, caramel frappuccino, whatever you want to call it, is done. I think it turned out really cute. It looks like the drink of my dreams. Next, I'm going to be making an iced coffee, and I'm not sure if there's a fancy name for that, but whenever I see people carrying these, I think they look really cool. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the cup out of some clear plastic from packaging, and since I didn't have much left of this, I made the template smaller, and since the plastic is pretty thick, it doesn't have to overlap very much on the sides. Now I can wrap it into the cup shape and use clear tape to hold it together. Be generous with this because this plastic is really going to want to separate. I forgot to mention you could probably use actual plastic cups as the plastic for this. Next, I'm going to make some ice for this iced coffee out of some hot glue. So I'm taking a piece of parchment paper and dolloping little glue dots, trying to roughly get it into a square shape, but it didn't really turn out that way. And instead of hot glue, you could also use beads. While those are drying, which is super fast, I'm going to make pretty much the coffee mixture to paint inside the cup. So I'm using some Mod Podge, but you could probably use regular glue. And I'm adding a little bit of tan paint to that and mixing it up. And now I'm adding my little glue dots to that. And this part takes a little bit because they're all kind of connected with this thin string of hot glue. So I just need to separate them because you can kind of see the strings in the end and they don't look very good. For some of the more oddly shaped glue dots, I trim them into squares, 
but for the ones riding to the side, you won't really be able to tell, but you might want to do this for the top ones. Okay, now I can mix that up, make sure all the ice is coated, and then apply that to the inside of the cup. You mainly want to get the coffee mixture everywhere and then just separate the ice out evenly, but I didn't have enough ice at first, so I had to add more later. And I feel like, you know, just looking at a picture of these drinks, there is a ton of ice in there. In my opinion, too much ice, but I mean, I've never had one, so I probably shouldn't be one to talk. I found you couldn't really see the ice from the outside, so I started using the end of my paintbrush to really push that flat side of the ice into the cup so it kind of showed through a little more. And it looks really good when you're pressing on it, but it doesn't really have that same effect all the time. I ended up letting this first layer dry and then adding a second one with some brown ice. And this is just the same glue dots that I painted brown, but I was hoping you'd be able to see these through the coffee a little better and it did kind of work. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you'll want to make sure to wipe off that very top edge so the coffee's not going, you know, all the way to the top. After letting this dry, unfortunately, I filmed these videos on the ground in my room, so this was sitting on my floor, and I wasn't paying attention and fully dropped to a knee on top of this cup that was just standing there. And my knee was fine, but this cup was not looking great. So I ended up remaking this, and here is what that one looked like. So I'm going to next add the base of the cup the same way I did for the other one, just adding a lot of glue to the inside of the cup and then placing it on top. And now I'm crumpling up pieces of paper to stuff inside of this to add some volume for the inside of the cup, but I should have waited till this dried first, so I just left this first piece in and came back when it was dry. And after adding enough paper till it reached the top, I added some glue around the sides so it would stay like that. And now to create a flat top to add more ice on top, I'm cutting out a circle of plastic from packaging, but you could probably just use regular paper or cardboard. And once I finally cut out the perfect circle to fit in there, I did some glue on top to glue it in. The reason I'm tapping on it like this is because you can't really see the plastic, so I'm just making sure you know it's there. Now once that's dry, I made another batch of the coffee ice mixture. And this was the second batch of ice I made that was a little bit too small, so I had to use a lot. But now I could just top the coffee with this ice mixture, and I feel like this is what really sells the look. After adding more ice and letting it dry, here's how it looks. Now I just need to trim around the base and then add the straw. I meant to leave a little opening in the plastic so the straw could go deeper, but I forgot, so I just cut the straw at an angle and then glued it on the top. Now that is how to make this iced coffee. I feel like it looks pretty realistic and would make any stuffed animal look cooler. Now the last thing I'm going to make is honestly the only thing I get from Starbucks when I go, and that is the birthday cake cake pop, so I had to make them. To make the actual cake pop itself, I'm using some cornstarch dough that I made. It's super easy, I'll leave the recipe and video down below. But you can use any kind of dough or clay that hardens, or even a round bead if you have it. So I'm just making little balls of this, and I'm using toothpicks as the sticks, so I really just made them to look proportional to the sticks. And I trimmed the pointy end and made sure to add glue to the other side of the toothpick so the dough hopefully sticks in there once it's dry. Now I let them dry in this makeshift cake pop stand which is a must for these next few steps. But right now they were looking a little lumpy and that's totally my fault. The dough I made I think I heated up too long so it was a little bit chunky. So I tried to sand them with sandpaper but that wasn't really working. So I decided to just dip the whole thing in glue to hopefully smooth it out. And it kind of worked, but it's probably best to just get them smooth from the beginning. After letting them dry, I can paint them with that classic baby pink color. And this is what really sells the fact that they're the Starbucks cake pops for me. And I'm trying to be really careful around the base there. After letting that dry, I can finally add the little white non pareil sprinkles. And I was trying to think of different ideas to use for the sprinkles, but I eventually decided to just dot them on with a toothpick. And I think that was the best option because I didn't have anything tinier I could sprinkle on instead. And after that, these cake pops are done. I did glaze them with a little bit of Mod Podge because I feel like the coating chocolate is a little shiny, but that's pretty much it for my go-to order at Starbucks. Let me know what you guys order from Starbucks because maybe I should try some new things. Now that is it for this video. I also made this little bag out of the parchment, but I can't really close it because tape doesn't really stick to parchment paper, so... That's unfortunate. Also, check out my felt foods video for how to make other coffee shop foods like croissants, donuts, cinnamon roll, all out of felt. But I really hope you all liked this video, especially the person who requested this. Please give this video a like, comment any video suggestions you have, especially Halloween costume ideas, and subscribe if you haven't already. 
I'll see you next time.